I'm Rabbi Aaron Meyer, Senior Rabbi at Temple Emmanuel of South Hills, and I'm so grateful that we can be together after a long week. I'm so grateful to see friendly and familiar faces, even if on Zoom, keeping these connections between our faith communities and between us as human beings is so important now as ever. As the Jewish community says goodbye to Shabbat, our day of rest, Rabbi Emily Meyer and I will offer the traditional blessings over that separation and a wish for a good week ahead. I'm the Reverend Noah Evans. I'm the rector, the pastor of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Mount Lebanon. And today I'll be sharing the 23rd Psalm, which is our assigned text for church um, on Sunday morning, and several prayers from the prayer book in my tradition. And I'm the Reverend Jim McGaw from the Unitarian Universalist Church of the South Hills, also known as Sunny Hill. And I'm going to be sharing with you a song written by Holly Near called I Am Willing, which speaks to the need to find hope uh, and especially finding hope in those who have come before us and dealt with hardships and challenges. And I'm the Reverend Laura Strauss of Sunset Hills United Presbyterian Church. I'll be sharing with you this evening a reading from Barbara Mahaney as we look at how we might hold on to the sacred in the midst of our ordinary, where we may have a, a space of sacred rest even in our work week. Shabbat, our day of existential rest and reflection, offers us an opportunity to recharge for the week ahead. We join now in the traditional blessing, saying goodbye to our friend, concluding with a prayer for Eliyahu Hanavi, the prophet and herald of the Messianic age and a promise of better days to come. A prayer from the Book of Common Prayer of the Episcopal Church from the Compline, the evening service. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. 
give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. In the 23rd Psalm, which is the psalm that's assigned for tomorrow, for Sunday, in the Episcopal Church. A connection to the tradition that teaches us that God is with us in times that are dark, times that are scary, times like these. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And a prayer for the evening. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fervor of life is over and our work is done. Then in thy mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Amen. <laughs>
from Barbara Mahaney, columnist at the Chicago Tribune. Emergency blanket on holy pauses and joy taking. It dwells as too many things do in the back of my old blue station wagon, the car so old it predates the cup holder as a standard feature. It once was a wedding present from a friend I dearly love. For years and years it covered our bed, then the bed of the boys who came two and ten years after the wedding. But eventually, it started getting so holy I feared it might wend its way around some little one's neck some night, so off the bed it came, in the back of the car it landed, which it turns out is a most essential thing. The blanket now has a much more important job than keeping arms and legs and little pink toes covered in the night. The blanket now is in charge of instant, spontaneous, and unanticipated taking time out. The blanket indeed is for emergencies. Emergency blanket, that's what the safety guide calls it. Scold us to keep one in case of emergency. Just so happens that in my old wagon, those screeching brakes are often involved. An emergency is not so much tumbling into the ditch or running out of gas in the middle of nowhere. More like sating the urge to suddenly and without notice fling yourself to the ground glance skyward for cloud watch or picnic. A sad thing about me, or one of them at least, is that I am not a natural born disciple of taking a time out. That's a subject in which I've always needed extra schooling. I remember long ago being home from college on spring break and being holed in my room for, oh, 10 hours straight, memorizing every last function in the human body for a whopper of a physiology exam. I remember my papa, a man known to keep his fingers to the keyboard for sessions that routinely went late into the night, coming to my room, practically nabbing me by the neck offering forth one of his famous Papa-isms. The wise man says, he who keeps his nose to the grindstone gets nothing but a sharp nose. And so he ushered me out the door, down the stairs and off to some silly movie. I still need prompts. I still need post-its stuck around my life, reminding me that not every hour need be for getting something done. I still need basically someone grabbing me by the neck, point me down the stairs, turn me in the direction of silly movies. My papa's not around anymore, so I keep my blanket near at hand. In fact, I travel 12 months a year with my holy blanket. Proof of its indispensability tumbled undeniably forth one glorious spring day in the thick of spring break. When the old wagon, my two boys, and I turned in at the lighthouse parking lot instead of driving by. During spring break, the little town where we live all but empties as flocks flee south for radiant beaches and undiluted sun. But we, odd ducks, stick close to home in our chilly beaches along Lake Michigan, less than a five minute drive from where our blanket resides. I lurched the car into park, slung backpack over shoulders, and while wondering eyes absorbed the shock, I hauled that blanket from the back. Come on, boys, I shouted over my shoulder, headed down the hill, we're going to the beach. My whole point in dwelling on the ratty old blanket, of course, is that it's stitched with a particular wisdom, the most essential grace of stopping time sometimes, hitting the proverbial pause, even if, especially if, you're not a million miles from home and you've not packed a suitcase. To gather on a beach, to bury legs in sand, 
to watch the waters ebb and flow, it can be a holy moment. The sacred sound of laughing with your children or anyone you love. There is unending grace, it seems, in allowing an ordinary moment to turn itself inside out. So here's the prompt. Be ready in an instant. Don't leave home without your holy blanket. Amen. Good night. Good night.